Well, guys, we're back again talking about their zero and the absolute taxpayer con job that it is. Though this time, surely, they're taking the piss too much with what we've got here. I mean, how can you justify giving a £70 billion net zero contract to a small company in Cornwall that specialises in education and schools? Someone please tell me how that makes sense when the company itself is worth like 350 grand or something and from what I can tell has nothing to do with green energy or anything like that which you think would be a prerequisite for net zero crap. In fact, it would be like the government employing me to run a government department or something with no experience at all or staff to back me up when doing it. It's completely bloody insane. Now, obviously, I think this £70 billion net zero contract shouldn't even exist because not one of us ever wanted our money to be spent on this, and especially not during a government-inflicted poverty crisis that they're calling a cost-of-living crisis and blaming on bat flu or Putin man bad. Of course, our own politicians are more to blame for our current shit state than any foreign leader or virus, but they're never going to admit that, are they? I mean, let's be honest, they can spend 70 billion on net zero tripe right now when surely that money could be better spent elsewhere, you know, on helping people here, not making them poorer as net zero does. Now, I would say it could be spent on lowering fuel costs, but let's be honest, they won't do that because they want the fuel costs high to make Net Zero not seem like such a complete shit show as it does now. Yep, you can't push Net Zero tech that makes energy more expensive with our previous fuels being sold on the cheap after all, can ya? They need the price of gas and that to be similar or more to Net Zero energy costs so the public won't turn against them like we see in Sri Lanka recently. This is something the guys at the Lotus Eaters did a piece on that's too long for me to cover here, so I'll link it down below for you to go through if you want. But back to this new contract, I do want to ask you guys if you think this 70 billion represents value for money, you know, when you hear what the money's actually gonna do. Here the Express states, the Palace Group's four-year contract is aimed at ramping up the use of sustainable resources, improving recycling and boosting the use of greener technologies and the cleaner use of water. It also aims to make electricity, gas, oils and other fuels greener by introducing technologies such as hydrogen battery and nuclear. The firm will also provide the framework for making transport greener. Now, does any of that sound like it's worth the money or will do anything that is useful to people for the £70 billion that's being spent? I mean, do you actually see anything that will come of the £70 billion? Because I bloody don't. Providing framework for greener transport is not providing transport, so it's obviously completely worthless. The same with the rest of it, in fact. Now, yes, you could say nuclear sounds good, but that's not them building more nuclear plants or anything like that, I'm bloody willing to bet. To me, it sounds like a load of old bollocks and something you would do when funneling taxpayer money into some sort of slus fund or something like that. It actually makes it sound like a massive con job to bleed the taxpayer dry that little bit more, but then again, that's what net zero looks like to me, as I've said many times before. Now, this all matches up with things like reports on heat pump improvements that really only offer a few percent increase under favourable conditions, so is once again worthless. It also goes hand in hand with Sadiq Khan pushing ultra-low emission zones further out of London while the WEF wankers lobby governments to remove private ownership of cars. Yep, these globalist scumbags are well on the way to removing your right to own your own car by first pricing you out of driving while they try to price you out of living altogether. In fact, this no-car ownership crap is something you will hear from our MPs in the coming years more and more, so make sure you watch out for that one, guys.